Hello and welcome back to another MATLAB video. Functions with just one input, as covered in the last video, are useful, but they don't always get the job done. Instead of being restricted to just one input and one output, functions can have any number of inputs and outputs, or even a variable number of inputs and outputs. For this video, we will continue to use our trusty Taylor series function for explorations beyond single inputs and outputs. The process to make a function with multiple inputs is very simple. All you do is, in the initial line of the function, instead of one input within the parentheses, create a comma-separated list of input variables for the function to use, like this. Setting multiple inputs not only allows you a greater degree of control over what values the function uses, but you can also streamline your function by setting variables as inputs instead of defining them later in the function. The process to make a function with multiple outputs is very similar to the multiple input process. In the initial line of the function, instead of just one output within the brackets, create a common separated list of output variables for the function to create, like this. After defining multiple variables as outputs, you do not have to ask for all the outputs every time you run the function. If prompted for fewer than the total number of outputs, the function will only give the number of outputs in the prompt. Additionally, if you want the function to pass on returning a certain output from the list, you can put in the tilde operator to ignore that specific output. Not only can you ask the function for less than the full list of outputs, you can also prompt it with less than the full list of inputs using nargin. Using nargin in a function allows you to find out how many variables were input into that function. So, if in our function, where num terms is the second input, we have a line like if nargin is defined as 1, num terms equals 1, then num terms is hard coded into the function if only one argument is inputted. Additionally, nargout, which counts the number of outputs, can also be used in tandem with multiple outputs to streamline a function. If you want to write a function where the number of inputs or outputs is variable, then varargin and vargout are very useful tools for you. By writing the initial line of a function as function vargout equals func of vargin, any amount of inputs or outputs can be used with the function. Using varargin is much cleaner and quicker than using multiple if statements like described earlier, and using vargout can really dictate the way the function works and how it presents its outputs. Plus, vargin and vargout can be used alongside nargin and nargout. For example, by writing vargout of 1 equals nargin and vargout of 2 equals nargout, you can use all four commands to efficiently output the number of in and outputs of the function. Plus, these operators can combine to create a function with some required and some optional inputs. By writing a function with inputs of a, var arg in, the first input is required, but not the second input. So by putting in an if statement using n arg in, you can determine whether the optional input is used or a value is hardcoded in, depending on whether n arg in equals 1 or 2. These examples go to show the potential computations unlocked by using these seemingly simple operators of n arg in, n arg out, var arg in, and var arg out. Check out the documentation for a deeper dive on the various uses of these operators. Did you know functions can exist within other functions? Check out the next video, Subfunctions, for an exploration into the mysterious realms of subfunctions and nested functions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in another MATLAB video.